Hey everybody, Jack Barnwell here on beautiful Mackinac Island on a crisp fall evening. We are out at our 120 year old log cabin and we have a really special treat for you this evening because I am going to share with you my secret recipe for my incredible salmon dinner. I am famous in a very small circle for this incredible salmon and I feel with this audience that we have it is my duty to share it with you all so we're going to cook salmon together. I'll tour you through and show you this incredible beautiful old historic cabin and it's going to be a fun little evening so let's dive in. Okay everybody, so I know this is a little bit out of the norm for this channel. We are typically touring through beautiful gardens and showing all kinds of gorgeous landscapes and projects and all kinds of fun things. However, this is a really, really delicious salmon recipe that I've been wanting to share with you all for quite some time. I've just had this dream about doing this and I thought it'd be kind of fun. Believe me, this is no cooking channel and I am no Martha Stewart, but I think you're gonna love this salmon recipe. So um, I've got it somewhat out to show you guys what we're gonna be cooking up this evening. A big, beautiful side of fresh Alaskan coho salmon. Look at how absolutely gorgeous that is. I like to cook a full side of salmon, you know, or from the tail up, depending on how many people or how much salmon I like to cook. I don't like to cook them in individual steaks. I think um, it just holds a lot more moisture and flavor and everything in and the style and technique and the way that I cook the salmon, this works really well. We're gonna put the salmon over a salad, a really kind of great fall salad of roasted Brussels sprouts, beets, yams. We're gonna chop those all up with some beautiful dinosaur kale. Chop that all up. Once these are roasted and everything, we're gonna get some awesome color out of the veggies. We'll crumble some walnuts and goat cheese on there. Lay the salmon right over top and slice up and warm up these awesome pepper Parmesan rolls from a local bakery here in Northern Michigan. It's gonna be a really, really yummy dinner. I'm excited to make it because I'm excited to eat it, but it's gonna be fun to share this recipe with you all. And while we are having this uh, you know, fun evening cooking salmon. Of course, we need to be having a really yummy, delicious, warm cocktail. And uh, Maker's Mark is my bourbon of choice. I'm gonna show you all how to make the cocktail that is my fall cocktail uh, that goes really, really well with the salmon as well. And um, so we'll listen to some music. We're gonna cook up the salmon. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm gonna do a little bit of prep and get this all ready and we'll be right back. All right, so we've done a little bit of the prep work here. We've got our salad kind of medley all chopped up. And what we do for that, um, all the, the yams, the beets, and the Brussels sprouts are all chopped up in, you know, about a half inch cube, more or less. The Brussels sprouts are <clears throat> quartered. Um, but those will all get tossed into our little bit of an oil medley mix first and roasted, and they'll be roasting for about 20 minutes or so before we add the walnuts and kale. Then we'll toss that all together after about five to 10 minutes with the kale and the walnuts, toss that all together with a little bit of like a balsamic glaze, real, real light on the balsamic, and that will be our salad underneath the salmon. So that's prepped, ready, looking great, nothing more to do there. 
But the first things first here, before we get going on our salmon sauce, which is the secret, the secret sauce to Jack's famous salmon, um, is, is the sauce, it makes it. But um, there is a little bit of bourbon in the sauce, so we might as well pour ourselves a cocktail while we're getting going here. So if you're following along at home and you <clears throat> do like to have a little bit of bourbon every once in a while, um, Maker's Mark happens to be my bourbon of choice. Pour yourself a nice fat shot. A little bit of Maker's. I really like Fever Tree Ginger Beer. This is my fall cocktail here now. Maker's Mark Fever Tree Ginger Beer. A little bit of pumpkin pie spice, believe it or not. Just a shake, just a shake. Take that beauty, pour it through a bigger, taller glass or a Yeti like this. Comes out just a little bit frothy because that ginger beer's got some fizz to it. Oh yeah. And that's a great way to start your salmon cooking. Okay, it is sauce time. This is it, pay attention. There is no exact science to Jack's famous salmon sauce. So follow along because this is a huge side of salmon. As you can see, this is a massive, like four pound, beautiful slab of salmon. Oh, and by the way, it's very, very important. Double up on your aluminum foil and make this kind of boat-like. Um, because with the sauce, with the salmon cooking and everything like that, it goes in the broil, all that. It, um, it's really, really nice at the end to be able to just crumple that all up and get rid of it. Um, and so I make kind of like a, a doubled up little pan for the salmon to go in. And um, because it, frankly, it's way too big for one of my cookie sheets anyway. <laughs> so I had to make my own and this works really, really well. So I've got my little aluminum foil boat, the salmon, is sitting there ready to go. For the sauce, um, start with some extra virgin olive oil. And you're going about equal parts or a little less on the oil um, with oil, extra virgin olive oil mixed with toasted sesame oil. Okay, and this is a huge piece of fish, so I am gonna have to make sure that I've got plenty of um, the fixins. And as far as the oils go, you only need about 10% of the toasted sesame compared to the uh, olive oil. Now, honey, a local, local honey is the way to go. This is a star thistle honey out of Traverse City, Michigan. Gotta wait for that bear to get his head full of honey. And honey is the key that um, when it goes on there and you get it um, broiling at the end of our little process here, it like glazes and holds all the yummy moisture and everything into the salmon. So plenty of honey. Um, I'd say, I'm, I'm trying to guesstimate for you guys, I'd probably put about two tablespoons, maybe three of honey and uh, three to four tablespoons of oil so far. Next is your Dijon mustard, a really nice organic good Dijon mustard or stone ground mustard. Um, again, about the same amount as the honey, okay, good. Um, next is our Maker's Mark bourbon. About a shot or a shot and a half. Shot, save some for the other guys. Um, okay, a little bit of salt and pepper. Salt, a few twists, maybe three, four. A little bit of pepper. Okay, always, and then the three spices that I love to use for this sauce. Curry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight shakes. So like a teaspoon plus of curry. Cinnamon, a little less, maybe four shakes, five shakes of cinnamon, and turmeric. Turmeric's awesome. Um, gives it a really, really intense, beautiful color. Um, and the cinnamon and the curry, it's just a really, really unique blending of flavors with that honey mustard. It's hard to explain, but trust me, once you guys get this all going, you're gonna love it. So mix that all up. 
So you want to blend it, you know, obviously blend it in really, really well. Make sure that that oil and the honey gets really consistently blended. And you can see it, it's pretty thick. It's a pretty thick sauce because that honey is definitely nice and thick in there. It smells awesome. The bourbon and the cinnamon, it's like a warm, uh, it's, it's delicious. So <laughs> before I put the sauce on the salmon, there's one more technique that uh, is really, really important at this stage. Um, so you have to study your salmon a little bit. This salmon here, see how the, uh, the muscle kind of veining those, those lines there are, are heading down in this direction and then you know from the, uh, the spine they're heading more or less in the opposite direction there. Okay, this is a key technique. You wanna take your fork and kind of drag it with a little bit of pressure across the salmon in line with those with those lines there. And what that's doing is just breaking the skin surface just a little bit, tearing into those muscles a little bit, and it allows this marinade, this sauce, to get into the salmon just a little bit. So just tore into it just a little bit. Stir that up one more time. And then I like to, are you ready, drum roll, okay. I like to pour it right down the center and back. And let that marinade just work its way. You can see, you, know, you don't wanna go super thick by any means. Just a nice thin coating over top. And it's working its way in and the, the honey is nice because it kind of thickens it up and kind of sticks along and then everything. Um, so just a little bit more there. Now, this salmon, I'm gonna let it sit for just a few minutes while I get the oven preheating. I'm gonna prep all the veggies and everything like that and get that medley tossed in a little bit of oil and salt and pepper. And then, um, and then get that in and get that going. The beauty of this dish that we're making here this evening is that this roasted veggie medley can go in the oven. Uh, we're gonna put that in at about 350, probably 375. Um, the, that can go in, the fish can go in, everything can all be cooking all together and everything like that. So it really doesn't take that long to, uh, to, to make this dish at all. Um, so again, I'm gonna toss that all together, get the, uh, oven preheated and um, yeah we'll check back in with you guys in just a minute. <laughs> Alright so we've got the uh, the initial three beautiful look at the color in that bowl the initial three veggies in our medley there I put about probably three or four tablespoons of our oils again just the olive oil and toasted sesame oil in there and some salt and pepper and I'm just kind of you know simply tossing and mixing that little medley Dumping that out on this silicone baking liner here. These things are great, by the way. If you don't have them, go out to Williams Sonoma or whatever and get them because they're amazing. But look at that color, super fun. This is gonna be delicious. I did put some salt and pepper and everything in there as well, but just very, very simple to make sure the flavors of the veggies just come out really, really strong. Preheating the oven right now, we're going to let it preheat up to 375, throw this in for about 20 minutes, then put our walnuts and kale in there, mix that in, let it sit for another 10 or so. At that time that we pull out the, the medley here and put the walnut and kale in, that will be our signal to throw the fish in. So the fish will bake at 375 for about 10, 15 minutes. Uh, this is a huge slab, so we'll definitely air more on the 15 to 18 minutes um, for baking, and then we're going to move it on up and broil it. Now, when I learned this recipe, a good, good buddy of mine uh, out in Montana, Eric Hart. Eric, if you're watching, if you find this video, or in fact, I'll forward it on to you, uh, thank you, because I'm still making uh, the salmon recipe that you taught me with makers. and. Um, 
and gosh, it's been, you know, uh, geez, like 12, 15 years since you taught me this, and I'm making it all the time still, so thank you, buddy. Um, but I've, I've added a few things. I've added a few tweaks and made it my own, for sure. However, um, so because this slab is such a big, big side of salmon, we will probably need to have that baby in for about 16 to 18 minutes. We'll move it on up to the broil. Um, as I was saying, you can certainly cook this baby on the grill. At this point, you just take this whole thing in the aluminum foil, put it on the grill, close the lid, let it, let it uh, bake in the grill for about 15, 16 minutes or so, um, in at least that big of a piece. And then, and then again, move it into the broil. The broil is key. It really sears that top and all that honey and everything, locking in all that flavor, and it's just an incredible finish. All right, so I've just put in the veggie medley uh, into the oven, so we have about 15 to 20 minutes before I put the salmon in and the walnuts and the, uh, and the kale and everything. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to show you guys around this beautiful 120-year-old log cabin. And, uh, and show you the original part of the cabin and this addition here and everything like that and kind of walk you through it real quick while we got a few minutes, kind of be fun. Uh, the cabin is kind of quiet this evening because my wife and two beautiful boys are already down in Florida getting ready for our C3 garden season. I'll be heading down there really, really soon. I always stay up a little bit later on Mackinac to shut down the season up here with my team, shut down the cabin and everything like that before heading south. So this time of year, I love getting into the kitchen and cooking these big, incredible meals, sitting by the fire and, um, and uh, you know, doing what we do. So anyway, I'll show you guys around the cabin here. Here we are in the kitchen. Uh, this, this kitchen, we just recently completely um, renovated this beautiful, beautiful countertop. My younger brother, Emery, those of you that have seen other videos have seen a lot of his handiwork throughout our gardens. My younger brother built this for us. This is a beautiful Douglas fir hand uh, carved um, countertop that uh, he, he built and joined together all custom for this space. And um, this kitchen used to be really, really small. There, was, there used to be a wall right here and there was a massive wood stove that we cooked on and used for 10 years until just recently when we did this project, we got rid of it. Um, but there was a massive wood stove and the door used to be right here where this window is. And that was the back door. And when we used to live here year round, we'd come in and all of our winter stuff and everything would take up half of the kitchen. And there was a tiny little red table right here that was super charming and cute. And we'd sit around that while the wood stove was going. And, um, and we'd always have a big old pot of chili or whatever on the wood stove. This cute little spice rack and cookbook uh, shelf here. Um, we, we built this all custom to put this little doorway in. And it's like a little hobbit bathroom in here. This used to be a little laundry closet. We moved the laundry upstairs and built this tiny little hallway into a little bathroom, a little, because there was only one bathroom and it was upstairs, so we had to put a little half bath in down here. Uh, we learned that lesson when we had my grandmother out for dinner one night, and she was here and, uh, and needed to use the restroom, and then she had to go all the way up the stairs and everything like that. And grandma gets along, you know, and gets around great, but, uh, you know, it wasn't as convenient as a nice bathroom downstairs. So that next weekend, Papa Jack threw a bathroom in and, uh, and carved that into a little closet, but it turned out really charming. This addition here, we just put on a couple few years ago. Again, took a chainsaw, cut through the log walls. You can see these walls are like 10 inches thick because behind here are the full on exterior logs of the house. In fact, you can see the logs. We left them exposed on the inside of this wall. So I literally took a chainsaw and cut this out, pushed those logs out. And we built this little addition for the uh, dining room table. And oftentimes in the summer, this becomes my design office and everything like that. But it's beautiful with all these windows and it sits kind of right out in the, in the forest and in the garden there. Um, 
as you can see here, all these open exposed beams, these are all cedar logs from the island. And this uh, whole entire room that we're in now is an addition that was put on in the early 40s or so from what we can tell. But in here is the original log cabin. Look how tiny these little doorways are and everything like that. It's just awesome. But this is the original log cabin in here. This original space um, had, it always had a fireplace, but believe it or not, it was on the other wall. Um, in the 30s or 40s, from, from all that we can tell, they rebuilt the entire fireplace and chimney. It's a 30-foot masonry and stone chimney. It's a really impressive chimney, and, uh, and the fireplace works great. It's lovely. As you can see, we have a nice little fire going this evening. Um, and again, all original cedar logs from the island. And when you buy a home on Mackinac Island, everything comes with it. We've had this for about 12 years or so now and have done a lot of work. There's a huge amount of labor of love that goes into a 120 year old log cabin. But all these really fun things came with the cabin, including this beautiful, beautiful piano. And even with all kinds of dead keys, it still sounds magical. I don't know how old it is. But I sit and play this thing for hours sometimes. I get lost and I can get lost in it. Okay, so anyway, where were we? I do really, really want to show you the front porch. This porch space is absolutely magical. This is probably my favorite room in the whole house. Uh, this, this used to be a, uh, an open screen porch and we, or an open porch rather, and we screened it in and put these screen panels in and kind of built it in and made it a little cozier. This side over here features all these eclectic, weird, little different chairs, wickers, and things like that. This is an old rocking chair from the Grand Hotel, believe it or not. And all this stuff came with the house, and it's just a fun, funky collection of chairs for sitting and, and enjoying each other. And for my wife's birthday about three or four years ago, I built this huge, beautiful swing bed as a surprise. And it's a lovely spot. We sit here and all cuddle up as a family and look out at the water and at the sunset and read books and stuff like that. We spend a lot of time on that little swing bed. It's a really, really sweet little spot. But we better get back inside, check in on the, uh, the veggie medley and, um, and, uh, and get that salmon in the oven. All right, so we are going to now pull the veggie medley out, add the kale and the walnuts, stir them in a little bit, and stick it right back in uh, because our timing is working out just perfectly. We'll pull um, the salmon out then um, and, and move it up to broil when the kale and the walnuts have had their time to, to roast in just perfectly. So let's see how the Ooh, veggie medley is looking. Awesome. And we're gonna sprinkle all this loving on there. Just 
stir it in just a little bit. Oh, spilled a little bit. But that's perfectly okay. All right, so now that's gonna go back in and roast just for a few minutes more. And we'll check back in in just a few minutes and we're gonna pull the salmon up to broil and uh, all is going well. Okay, it is time to pull out the veggies and move that salmon up to broil. It's only gonna take a few minutes on the broil, so we're getting close and I'm getting hungry, so I'm excited about this dinner. Um, this is our beautiful salad. It's gonna go underneath the salmon. Check that out, looking stunning. Perfect, I'm gonna just throw a little bit of aluminum foil over top of that for a hot minute and let that sit. In just a minute, I'm gonna put the goat cheese on there and let it kind of melt down just a little bit, um, which is another awesome flavor that is gonna add to that salad. But look at that big old beautiful slab of salmon. This guy is ready. And fortunately, aluminum does not conduct heat or does not hold heat um, and so even though it's been in this super, super hot oven, I can touch that aluminum with my bare hands, which helps when I need to make this transfer happen here. Um, this is the, the trick here of the trade with a big old heavy slab. Yeah, baby. Okay, we're gonna move it right on up into the broil world. We'll have to watch it because it's not gonna take long. That All that beautiful glaze that we put on it, the secret sauce, all that honey in there is just gonna start caramelizing all on top of that salmon. It's not gonna take long. Like I said, three minutes or so, four minutes, and that thing is gonna be ready to go. So we're gonna turn this off, broil, start, and we'll watch it for a few minutes. This is gonna sit here and just cool off for a second, but we'll get the um, crumbled goat cheese sprinkled on our salad that's gonna go under the salmon. I'll get those pepper parmesan rolls warming up a little bit, and uh, it's not gonna take much. We don't you know, need a tremendous amount of bread on the side with this dish, but those rolls are so good. So just a little bit of a pepper parmesan roll on the side. This is coming together beautifully. Cheers. Okay, so the salmon has been in for a few minutes. Broiling is complete. It looks absolutely amazing. We're gonna pull this baby out. Oh, look at her sizzling, all that honey glazing on the top. We'll check. Make sure it's perfectly flaky. Just a tiny bit pink in the inside which is what you want with salmon, but it's flaky and cooked all the way through. Looks awesome, looks amazing. Um, so we're gonna slice into this, plate up, put our, look at that salad, turned out incredible. We'll, uh, we'll plate up, put the salad underneath a little slab of that salmon, and, uh, and, and, and I'll show you what it's gonna look like here in just a minute. All right, so <laughs> I'm just so excited about this dinner uh, but we are the the salmon is done the medley is done everything is looking amazing uh, the salmon with that glazing on the top just it slices so easy I'm just using this little silicone spatula and it just peels right off of the skin I'm just cutting some slabs salmon laying it right over that salad there and we've got these beautiful, whoo, hot, hot pepper parmesan rolls that go really well with this dish. And we'll slice into those with a little bit of warm butter. This is, uh, this is a really fun, very easy, but fun, delicious dish. I'm so excited to have shared my salmon recipe with you all. Um, it's, it's incredible. I want you all to try it. Let me know what you think, please comment, 
uh, send us some feedback on, on how you do or maybe some tweaks because I'd be happy to, you know, uh, try some other recipes as well that you all maybe have come up with for doing a beautiful side of salmon like this. But anyway, dive in, feed your families well, take care of each other. Love y'all. Cheers. Thank you.